If I told you that I had two watches in one in my hand right now, would you believe me? Well, if the answer is no, you better change that to yes. Welcome back to Jazz Time, everyone. Jazztime.com is an online store that buys, sells, and trades authentic luxury watches. We make these videos so you can easily choose the best watch for yourself in the comfort of your own home. We offer the lowest prices anywhere online, and if you'd like to know the price, simply click on the links in the description below. We greatly appreciate if you purchase your next watch from us at jazztime.com. Today we'll be going over a Patek Philippe Aquanaut Travel Time, reference number 5164A. This one's entirely in stainless steel as referenced by the A. It also has a dual time zone as well with a brown colored dial, black strap, and matching stainless steel buckle bracelet clasp. All right, and I'll be going over all of these features, the case, the dial, the bezel, crown, movements, the movement itself, as you can see through the case back, as well as the strap and the clasp. And I'll be giving you my, my thoughts on all of those as we go through this. All right, so first, the case here measures a 40.8 40 millimeter diameter from the 10 to four o'clock position, or, you know, two to eight o'clock position, same diameter. It has a thickness of 10.2 millimeters, so this can actually work very well as a dress style watch, very low thin form factor, all right? So looking at the overall finishing here, we have a high polish on the front of these lugs here, while there's a nice satin brush finishing along the sides, all right, going all the way around these pushers as well, ending up with a high polish underneath, even onto that case back. A very, very thin, thin little wafer portion right there, still high polish as well, all right, with that case back also showing my fingerprints very clearly, all right? So you can tell that this high polish is increasingly, is excessively high polish, all right? Now, the brush finishing actually stops at the sides of the case and it begins again on the front of this bezel here, this octagonal style bezel. It's not perfectly round, it's octagonal. If you can check and see the corners up there, it's not perfectly round, but that's part of what makes this the Aquanaut A Patek Philippe Aquanaut specifically. It has the satin brush finishing going vertically, straight up and down, all right? And it also has a high polish highlighting the outside on the first and second bevels, as you can see, going all the way around that bezel. Very, very nice form factor. I, uh, I really appreciate that. Okay, now looking at this dial, it is a, well, they consider it a black embossed dial. It looks a little bit more brown to me, to the eyes at least. It has sort of like that smoky look to it, where the center is actually slightly brighter than that of the outer edge where it's you know much darker so you get this very nice radial gradient moving from the center and going outward and you know this is a travel time or a, a um, I yes a travel time watch by seeing that there's you know latitude and longitude sort of patterns as if you're on a globe both on the greater dial and on the sub dial which actually registers the date all right now taking a look at this dial you'll also note that there's painted applied hour marks in Arabic numerals for most of the hours at least with very very thick index marks just so you know exactly where those hours reside on the minute and second track on the outside all right now also taking a look at the style you're probably wondering well what does this local and home mean what do they do and how is this two watches in one well allow me to demonstrate if you haven't seen one of these before this is how it is two watches in one. Now these two pushers on the left side of the watch adjust the local time. The local time is reflected on the solid hour and the solid minute hand. The, the minute hand is completely solid. It doesn't, it only moves with the time along, moved forward by the very, very thin second hand. Now these obelisk style hands, the solid ones are referencing the local time. Also the date follows the local time. Now, what is local time? Local time is where you are specifically. So say right now it is uh, 10, 14 in the morning. I know it is the morning because the local shows a light portion right there. If I were to advance the hour 
for the local time forward enough beyond 6 p.m. You'll note that it starts to become darker and that means I have reached the nighttime portion of the day. And when I move it past midnight, the date will move forward at the six o'clock as demonstrated, okay? And so when you have the local time moving forward, the local aperture will show approximately where the sun will be in the sky, what sort of light you will have. So at six in the morning, you'll probably have sunrise. That's sort of what it's indicating there with the half white, half black. Okay, and as the sun is rising, you get more and more daylight. Okay, and likewise for the home, to do so, well, let's go over the crown movements because in order to move the skeletonized hand, we'll have to use it with the crown. Now the first position of the crown simply winds out so you can, you know, unwind or you can wind the watch appropriately. Okay, pull out to the next position and the only other position and you can move the minute hand, all right? It does not hack that seconds hand, unfortunately, but there's no issue there because we're not talking about absolute precision. We're talking about, you know, the general, uh, the difference, the differentiation with minutes and hours, not so much with the seconds, all right? And now, as you can see, I'm moving the skeletonized hand beyond six o'clock PM. And now it is a PM time for the home. Now, what is the differentiation between local and home here is, well, if you happen to be traveling, because this is a travel time watch, either for work or for pleasure, you can use this skeletonized hand to keep track of time of your home time zone. If you happen to be, you know, wherever the time happens to be, let's say, uh, let's say 8 a.m. where you happen to be, your, your home, time zone is 8 a.m. And if you're traveling around and let's say you happen to go, well, maybe a bit far away from your home or yeah, if you happen to go maybe one or say two time zones ahead to the east, you can just do so very easily with these pushers on the left side. And now you can see that it is 8 a.m. where you are daytime and also 10 a.m local time, just two time zones away. And, you know, just basic math will show you how all of this works, okay? Now, my only issue with the functionality of this, it's not so much of an issue, it's just more of a personal, uh, maybe user error, maybe, um, is that the actuation point for these pushers is actually very high, so you can't adjust it very quickly, you'd have to wait and wait until the button comes up all the way before you press it again to advance the local time hour, all right? So keep that in mind when you are making your purchasing decision or once you have purchased this watch, just keep that in mind. You can't just you know rapidly press it because the actuation point is lower. The actuation point, the, the point at which the watch recognizes that you can push, you know, the watch, the point at which the watch recognizes you pressing this button is very high on this button. Now that's just a very, very small issue. I wouldn't really call it much of an issue for most people because honestly, you're probably not gonna be traveling all that much this year at least, or maybe, you know, in, in this time of a pandemic, travel kind of frowned upon, but you know, some people still have to do it and this makes a perfect tool to do so, okay? And if you're already at home, well, then there's no need to advance that hour and if you need to set the time while you are at home, well, you're in luck because you still have this main functionality within the crown, which advances both our hands as well as the minute hand, all right? And so if you're not traveling anywhere and your local and home are both overlapped, you have them su uh, superposed upon each other, which makes them, you know, effectively one watch now and then you have the second watch when you move time zones for example all right now you have your secondary functions all there very excellent and very elegant touch by patek philippe on the aquanaut okay and now if you happen to have you know some issues with the date maybe you moved forward too much or backward too much and your date's a little bit off well you can advance it forward by using the little supplied pusher here 
and press at the four o'clock position to advance the date forward by one with each press. All right, so very easy to use, no issue there. And if you happen to have a month that has only 30 days, you can just use this little supply tool again to just push it over from 30 to the first, no problem. All right, so what makes all of this possible? It's a very special movement. It's the 324S CFUS self-winding movement. It has a diameter of 31 millimeters, as you can see through the case back. It has a height of 4.9 millimeters, 29 joules, a total of 294 parts. It has a central rotor in 21 karat gold, and it's a unidirectional, unidirectional winding rotor. Now, you know, notice that you can move it either way, but only one direction will actually wind the mainspring, which will ultimately bring it upward to a total power reserve of between 35 and 45 hours, depending on you know the age of the watch, I, su I suspect. The balance is a Gyromax, with the balance spring being a Spiromax. All right, so you have that Patek Philippe sort of guarantee with this sort of movement with their own in-house made parts. It has a vibrations per hour rating of 28,800, a very high beat rating matching that of Rolex and even you know the highest level Audemars Piguet and Vacheron Constantin watches. So this will be keeping time just fine for you, four hertz, four hertz or you know four times per second. All right. So now like look, taking a look at this final portion here, we have the Aquanaut style strap made for the world time. It has those sort of echoing those sort of longitudinal and latitude sort of patterning that you see on the dial going all the way down, almost like a tire tread, really. A bit strange to make that comparison, but that's how it feels, that's how it looks like. All right, now going down to the clasp here, it's a double-sided button clasp. It can't open normally because you need the buttons to open it, and when it opens, it's a symmetrical open with the Patek Philippe with Genève engraved on the clasp itself. Again, all stainless steel, high polish with the Ascend brush finishing for that Patek Philippe logo that splits perfectly in half upon opening. All right, now while we're here, I can try it on and give you some of my thoughts as to how it wears on the wrist, the overall weight and the weight distribution. Okay, now on my wrist, this these straps come really large and so having them sized requires actually cutting them and physically removing portions of the strap. So if you ever need to increase the strap size, you'll have to get a new strap, unfortunately. All right, so on my wrist, I actually measured my wrist recently. It's seven inches exactly. So I'll have to wear it a little bit higher on my arm for it to you know, actually feel like I'm wearing something. All right, and when it comes to the overall size, I'm getting an excellent, excellent look. Good framing with the, the strap around the case there. Very, very clear view of the case, very easy to read with the high contrast, the supposedly quote unquote black, to me more brown colored dial with those very, very bright white markers. And actually, let me just check right here. There is actually luminescence on all of those hour marks as well as the hour and minute hands. So very useful to have as well in the dark. Say you're on an airplane and it's nighttime at least up in the air where you are, you can still adjust the hour and, and minute hands accordingly, okay? Very, very good usage of that luminescence there. All right, and when it comes to the overall framing, excellent, I do get a good sense of balance between the straps and the case, F very easy to read again. And when it comes to the overall wear, it feels very, very light, Incre incredibly light. And even though this strap is a black rubber strap with a very, very small portion of it being stainless steel in the, in the, the buckle there, the case itself is incredibly light for also being stainless steel. It's not titanium, you would think it was. You'd think that it is by how light this is. And the overall construction here with the lugs, it doesn't taper down it doesn't taper downward that much, so it hugs my wrist very well. Very good sense of security. I could go for a little bit more spacing with this uh, rubber strap, but that's what you get with the rubber strap. It's more of a, it's a bit of a sporty type of feel, bit of a sporty type of look. It's not for 
absolute, you know, fashion or luxury, but who knows? It's Patek Philippe. They can do whatever they want. Okay. So enough of what I think. What do you think about this watch? And would you get something like this that has effectively two watches in one? I think that's a very elegant method of showing or even having some sort of GMT sort of uh, style of a dial there. Very elegant in its presentation, all right? So what do you think? Leave, leave us some comments down below and I'd like to see what you guys think about this one. And as always, if you like this video, hit that like button. Subscribe if you haven't already. It helps us out more than you can ever know. Hit that bell notification so you can be notified when we go live with another video. And as always, if you'd like to purchase this watch, a current production model, or any other watch, a discontinued one, even you know a Patek Philippe, we can get them for you over at jazztime.com. Link is in the description below, and we'll see you in the next one. If you want to find out more about the watch you just saw in the video, you can just click below on show more to see the full description. Then you can check the link next to model as seen in video, click on it and you will get to the proper page where you can see all the details. If you're watching on a mobile phone, you have to click on the arrow down on the right hand side below the video to see the full description. If you like this video, please give us a thumbs up. If you would like to share this video with your friends, you can use the share button below and share it on any platform you like. If you have questions, constructive feedback, want to tell us about some mistakes or misspeaks, just write a comment below. If you want to see more videos like this, you should subscribe to our channel and visit our channel page where you can find all the videos. And if you're interested in a specific watch brand, you can check out our playlists. If you want to check the price for a watch or want to buy one, remember at jazztime.com you always get a steep discount, so you should check the prices with us. If you want to know the price for a specific watch, just go to Google, type in jazztime, plus the brand, model and the details you're interested in and Google will find the right page for you. Thank you for watching.